Yesterday, 18 December at 7.33 in the morning, Amtrak train number 501, the Cascades, derailed near DuPont, Washington on the I-5 overpass. So today we're going to take a closer look at the accident scene itself. Uh, we'll take a look on via Google Maps of the, of the route and the turn, and we'll take a listen to the actual audio from the train engineer at the scene of the accident, after the accident. And we'll also take a look at a video of what positive train control does for trains. We'll get a better understanding of what PTC can do, something the NTSB has been recommending for years. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. I'm a commercial pilot for the airlines, currently flying the Boeing 777, and I'm fairly familiar with NTSB accident investigation procedures. So let's take a closer look at the Amtrak derailment of train number 501, the Cascades near DuPont, Washington. This first video clip is courtesy of the Associated Press and is the actual voice of the engineer involved in the accident shortly after it happened. Aubrey Yardo. Three more, Doc. Amtrak 501 entering Centralia North, over. Amtrak 501, emergency, emergency, emergency. We are on the ground. Okay. We are on the bridge. Five in the square. Ah, that'll do. Easy stop, Jack. On the freeway. Need EMS ASAP. It looks like they're already starting to show up. BNSF train dispatcher 501, come in. Amtrak 501 answering Centralia North. Over. Hey guys, what happened? Ah, we were coming around the corner to take the bridge over I-5. There. Uh, right north into Squally, and we went on the ground. Okay, are you, um, is everybody okay? I'm still figuring that out. We got cars everywhere and down onto the highway. Some of the facts that we know so far are there were 85 folks total on board the train, 80 passengers and five crew members. The five crew members consisted of an engineer, a conductor, an assistant conductor, and two service personnel. This derailment also involved three cars and two semi-trucks on I-5, sending nearly 100 folks to the hospital. Three fatalities. The NTSB has pulled the event data recorder from the rear locomotive, and that data indicates that the train was traveling at nearly 80 miles an hour at the time of this accident. The curve over the I-5 overpass is rated at 30 miles an hour. The crew's duty day started at 5 a.m., the train departed at 6 a.m., and the accident occurred at about 7.30 a.m. in the morning. The train consisted of 12 coaches and two locomotives. The 12 coaches are the newer Talgo coaches from Spain, and the locomotives, and the lead locomotive is a new Siemens Charger locomotive procured through a $58 million program from the Washington State Department of Transportation via the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act and powering the rear of the train was an older Amtrak P-42 DC locomotive. After extensive testing, this was the inaugural run of the point of the new Point Defiance Bypass, about a 14-mile bypass, bypassing the old route that ran along the waterfront south of Seattle. This new bypass was recently constructed at a cost of over 150 to 180 million dollars. The 14 miles of new track saves about 10 minutes of commute time. Construction for the new point defiant bypass started in 2015. Here's the new point defiance bypass route, 14 mile route shown in red. Here's an aerial view from Google Maps of the curve over the I-5 overpass, and if you fly down this track, it's kind of a sneaker curve after a long straight stretch and obscured by trees, the track suddenly fades off to the left. Here's a graphic showing the layout of the cars after the accident, the new Siemens Charger locomotive on the far left, the Amtrak rear locomotive still on the tracks at the rear of the wreck, and one of the coaches inverted underneath the I-5 overpass bridge.
So we already know what happened in this accident. The train was going 80 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone and was going way too fast to negotiate the southbound turn to the left over the I-5 overpass. The question, of course, NTSB is going to be looking at is why was the train going that fast? And why was not the PTC positive train control installed on this new section of track? It's forecast to get stalled next year, but why wasn't it not already installed at this time? And as in all accident investigations, the NTSB will leave no stone unturned. They will not jump to any conclusions initially, and they're going to look at every single facet of the operation, including human factors, mechanical factors, operational considerations, signals and signaling, maintenance factors, and of course the event data recorders. This next video clip is from Metrolink in Southern California and explains very well how the PTC or positive train control system works. Southern California's Metrolink is among the busiest commuter rail services in the United States, carrying over a million passengers a month. Every weekday, 147 trains operate on seven different routes throughout six counties, a total of 324 route miles shared with freight and passenger rail. When combined with Amtrak and freight carriers, Metrolink dispatches over 325 daily trains on its entire rail network. To improve the safety of this network, Metrolink will introduce Positive Train Control System, a state-of-the-art collision avoidance technology. The Positive Train Control System uses computers and servers located in trains, global positioning systems, wayside signals, and central offices to establish continuous real-time communication over a digital network. All trains traveling on Metrolink's rail network, passenger or freight, are linked. Through the use of highly accurate next-generation GPS, the PTC system provides train crews continuously updated visual and audible data on the status of approaching signals, the position of approaching switches, speed limits at approaching curves and other reduced speed locations, speed restrictions at approaching crossings, and speed restrictions associated with areas where work is being performed next to or on the tracks. The train's onboard computer constantly calculates and displays the safe braking distance based on the train's speed, length, weight, and the grade and curvature of track. The engineer is provided ample warning time to bring the train to a safe stop. In the event that the engineer does not respond to the display and audible warning, the onboard computer will apply the brakes and bring the train to a safe stop. Positive train control revolutionizes rail safety in a variety of different scenarios. The system understands the status or color of approaching railroad signals and is designed to prevent a train from passing a red stop signal. The engineer is provided a visual representation of the braking distance for normal stopping while approaching a red stop signal. Additionally, the system will indicate when it will take over to bring the train to a halt. This functionality also applies to restricted speed zones, around curves, bridges, and other areas. The system also protects track workers and other support crews. Work crews control train movements approaching their work area using PTC. If authorization by the work crew is denied, the train engineer, or PTC, will bring the train to a safe stop. Although it will not prevent a train from striking a vehicle that drives around railroad crossing gates, PTC will slow trains through an intersection that is known to have damaged or broken gates. Should Southern California experience a major earthquake, PTC will bring all trains in the area of potential damage to a stop, so proper inspection of tracks, bridges, and signals can be made. Congress has mandated that all passenger rail services and most freight trains install fully functioning interoperable positive train control systems by the end of 2015. With significant investment by Metrolink, its five member agencies, the state of California, and the federal government, Metrolink will have one of the finest positive train control systems in the nation. Metrolink is proud to work with our partners in leading the rail industry in the development of positive train control. Everything we do demonstrates an appreciation for life. 
at every act values the lives of our employees, contractor co-workers, customers, and the communities we serve. Because at Metrolink, safety is foundational. If you found this information helpful and useful, hit like and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. We welcome constructive and positive comments in the comment section below. Anything less may get you booted from the channel permanently. Please keep your comments respectful, especially for those that lost their lives in this accident.